If you've been on YouTube lately, you've probably been hearing tons of buzzwords like paleo, keto, carnivore when it comes to dietary recommendations. And if you're as confused as I am about this, then this is the video for you. Here, I'm going to be breaking down for you my three most important questions that I recommend you ask yourself whenever you're hearing somebody give you dietary advice. This will help you sift through all of the noise and decide for yourself what you think. And stay till the end where I reveal to you what I actually think about some of these diets. Hey there, I'm Dr. Anna. I'm a medical doctor. I was trained in Italy. And on this channel, you are going to learn how to master the Mediterranean diet. So being on YouTube in 2023, you're probably seeing so much content about dietary advice. And likely this is the kind of content you like to watch. It's probably how you found this video in the first place. But I want to help you by sharing the three questions I recommend you ask yourself. And these three things are things that I ask myself whenever somebody is giving me dietary advice or nutrition advice. So what are these three things? Well, number one, the first thing you should ask yourself when somebody starts telling you about a diet is how long has this diet been around? In general, if something is brand new, then we don't really know that much about it. And that's going to make it really hard to decide if it's healthy or unhealthy for you. And on the flip side, if we're talking about a diet that has been around for a very long time, like vegetarianism or the Mediterranean diet, then very likely some people are getting benefits from it. They're surviving for a long time following this dietary approach, and very likely that will give enough time for some scientists and researchers to make an observation about possible benefits of that diet. Maybe these people are having specific health outcomes. And if there's enough healthy benefits of a dietary practice and the diet has been going on for long enough for scientists and researchers to ask questions about it and wanna study it, that's probably meaning that there is something good going on. So just think to yourself, if something is brand new and it hasn't been around long enough, there hasn't been enough time for anybody to even study it in the first place. So at that rate, we really just don't know about it. And it's really hard to make real conclusions about the health of a dietary approach that has not been around for a long time. Now, my second question that I recommend you ask yourself when listening to dietary advice is, has it been studied in large and diverse populations? So this is is really crucial that you understand when it comes to scientific research. Now, this is not just research about nutrition or diets, but I'm talking about research on any topic. We always use statistics to try to understand what something means, and it's really a numbers game at that point. And now I won't bore you with any details about statistics because you'll all probably fall asleep. But what I want you to understand is that whenever any kind of a study is done and we're using statistics to analyze what it means, Means the larger the group of people included in a research study, the better the quality of the research is considered. And what that means is it gives us better evidence. We always talk about the data coming from research in terms of evidence to support a hypothesis. That's what science is really all about. And so if you're looking at a research study or somebody is telling you about a research study, but it was studied in a group of 13 people or 28 people, you should understand for yourself that that is not a lot of people in order to derive really clear conclusions. That is not considered the best data. Now, in a lot of circumstances, especially if we're studying a rare disease, there's just not a lot of people to study that have that thing. So certain times in medicine and research, we're forced to study things at a really small scale. But in general, that's not the best and the strongest evidence that we can get about that thing. So just know that the larger a group of people is included in a research study, likely the better quality that research is going to be. Now, if this video is giving you benefits so far, and I hope that it is, and if you're learning something new, please subscribe, hit that bell notification on so that you don't miss any important information you need. Now, here's my third question that I want you to ask yourself whenever somebody is trying to give you dietary advice. Ask yourself, is there something that this person is trying to sell me? Very often, we're going to hear people, it might be in the media, on 
on YouTube or it could be somebody in the grocery store that is trying to give you advice or trying to explain why something's so beneficial, but it turns out that they're trying to sell their program. Well, in general, most healthcare professionals are not trying to sell you on something. They're trying to give you unbiased, objective information. That is literally why we do research in the first place is to try to get as unbiased and as objective information as possible so we can give recommendations that apply to as many people as possible. That is the whole point of it. And so if somebody is trying to sell a program, maybe they came up with their own diet or they're selling their own concept or they're selling their own philosophy, just be skeptical because if they're selling their thing, then you know by definition that what they're telling you is extremely biased. Now I'm not saying it's not good stuff. It might be good stuff, but just ask yourself if it's biased or not so that you can understand how to think through what that person is telling you. Now, even if somebody is selling a philosophy or selling a program, there might be research about it and there might be good evidence to support it. But you should ask the person if they can please explain to you the benefits or the reasons why in a very clear, simple way without a lot of jargon and without a lot of fluff. And if that person can't explain it to you in that way without using fancy words and crazy statistics that are going to kind of distract you, then it is something that you might want to pause and do a little bit more research for yourself to understand what's really going on. Now, are you ready for my bonus? What do I really think about some of these hot diets that are going all around? Well, quite honestly, I don't have an opinion that is specific to any of them individually. I will say as a blanket statement, I don't support very extreme diets for most of the people because they tend to not be sustainable. They might not be sustainable in terms of how you feel eating that way. They might not be sustainable for your wallet. They might not be sustainable for other members of your family to eat that way. In general, I think that extreme diets have their place when it comes to health and our health goals, but usually an extreme diet is meant to be practiced for a short period of time to get a specific piece of information. For example, the FODMAPS diet is a diet that is low in a lot of certain carbohydrates for somebody who might have IBS or SIBO, which is small intestinal bowel overgrowth, and that person is trying to figure out what are their problematic foods, so they do an elimination diet so that they can then eat a very simple way, let their body kind of cool down, and then slowly reintroduce one food at a time. That's okay. It is considered an extreme diet, but there's a specific purpose for it. But there are people out there who are going to recommend eating an extreme way forever. And generally, I don't sync up with that line of thinking. I really prefer recommending to anybody, and I prefer eating myself in a way that's as sustainable as possible for as long as possible. That is part of why I love the Mediterranean diet because we already know there's not just a lot of scientific research, but people have been eating this way for hundreds, if not thousands of years. That's a lot of data. So my question for you today, what dietary practice or approach have you been confused about lately? Comment below and share with us so that we can try to clarify some of these points for each other and help support each other in this healthy community that we're building. Now, if you are curious to know a little bit more about the specific health benefits of the Mediterranean diet, I want you to check out this video over here where I walk through seven specific health benefits that have been backed up by research on the Mediterranean diet. And I break it down in a very simple way so that you kind of just have the take home message for all of those points. So go ahead, check out that video. I'll see you over there.